Hello everyone, my name is Matt Ryan. I will be giving you a presentation today over power influence and productivity in today's modern world. As we go back in time, I want to take a look back at how it used to be uh, in the 1980s where we see a lady on a telephone with a black and white computer uh, looking at a very large spreadsheet of data to try to manage her workflow and lead her people. And she's on the phone, uh, possibly doing a teleconference um, where people cannot see her, just like uh, you're able to see me today. She didn't have that capability back then. And she's trying to lead and influence her people uh, through the power of leadership. Then we fast forward to 2019, where today we see uh, a gentleman sitting on the counter, uh, he doesn't have a full suit on, which is fine, uh, has his tie, still business professional looking, uh, casual conversation about work and how it's going. We see the computers, uh, we're seeing multiple screens instead of just one screen, all in color, with visual aids as well as cameras and, and whatnot. Very, very different environment and very uh, different way of leading your team while you're on the floor with them and working with them. So there's a change in process that we need to look at to move forward and really think about how we can affect change with using power and influence in today's leadership. Leadership starts with a vision and culture. The culture is devised by uh, a vision that your organization would come up with uh, that has an end all game plan to get to usually by the end of the year. The environment in which uh, individuals can contribute now has to be more free flowing and user friendly than ever before. We have to have a system and process to be able to onboard people and be able to welcome them into the work environment and make it effective for them to be able to communicate with their team. Implementation processes and changes um, happen through empowerment. When an employee feels like they are empowered to do the best that they can, this is when we see the most amount of change and process happen because the employee is the frontline employee that is able to see what's going on and be able to report back what changes can make it more effective for them. So having uh, 360 feedback from employees is critical in today's work environment. Select and retain the right employees is the what every employer uh, his motto is today is we've got to select the right talent from the get-go and there are more and more ways to be able to do that there are more platforms which we'll get into as to being able to find that talent that has the most amount of experience that aligns with what your company is going through and then we perform and meet targets through these changes and as we do that we're able to hold our people accountable we're able to utilize our communication our delivery systems, our human performance, and our metrics, and all of that leads to leadership today. Initiating change in procedures is something that we really have to look at and figure out. The best way to do this is to use change to your advantage. And by doing that, we foster working relationships that grow and develop people. Oftentimes, the frontline employees are able to see organizational changes much faster than a leader can. So it's important to be able to listen and then make those changes as we need to. People, process, and technology bring today's culture. So the people are the key to the organizational success. Dan Matson, who is the CEO of uh, Leisure Care, a company that I work for, talks about people, process, and technology all the time. It starts with the people. If you focus on anything else, you're going to miss your game plan. Process improvement through employee empowerment is the best way to make employees feel like they are part of the team. Instead of a dictator leadership where the uh, CEO comes and says, this is what we're going to do, and then the manager comes and says, okay, team, this is what you need to do, it's a more collaborative approach that allows employees to feel empowered to make decisions that move the company forward. The use of a technology today has enhanced our communication process. As we saw on the first slide, in the 1980s, we didn't have the, te the technology that we have today. Utilizing this technology makes it 
far more advanced for us to be able to do things than we have in the past, including education, just like this. Uh, when all of these wheels are in motion, the organizational culture is alive. So when we're talking about people, process, and technology, utilizing that together to create the best culture and environment, then it's a win-win uh, situation for the organization. Dan Matson also talks about the three P's, which are people, processes, and pipeline. We really have to put trust in the people to do the right thing. When you're hiring someone, you're thinking about them being in that position and how they're going to perform. Process is something where uh, we're confident that the people that we hire can find better improvements along the way and be able to communicate those with the leadership on a collaborative approach. And pipeline is finding the talent and really utilizing the technology and social networking to be able to find that talent. Let's talk a little bit about social networking and top talent. 73% um, of the workforce is found on social networking sites like LinkedIn. 77% uh, of professional networks come together using social network platforms. 77% of professionals are on a network site like LinkedIn where you can see their experience. You can see people that have selected them and, and uh, said that this is a person that you should definitely hire. Uh, you're also able to see some past experiences and if that's going to work with what it is that you're trying to fit within your culture. And this is even before the employee has even or the candidate has even applied for the position. You'll be able to match talent and then select that talent based on that match. Now, the candidate can do the same thing. They can put in a, their profile and follow along and then be able to see what companies they match up with. Uh, I'm a great example of that. I'm standing here today in a community that I represent as an executive director. And I got this position uh, based on me matching my profile to a position that is open and available. And this position came up with a 93% match rate. 93% is pretty darn good uh, comparative to where I was at in the tech, uh, tech field. Uh, I've been in telecommunications for 18 years and my match rate was at 85%. So uh, I applied, even though that the industries were different, the transferable skill sets were there. And after several interviews in several months, I finally was onboarded with this company that entrusts me to run an entire uh, multi-billion dollar company. And I'm very excited uh, for that opportunity. And it wouldn't have been without the social networking. I want to stop for a second and show you a book that I have here uh, through Cy Wakeman, uh, which I highly recommend. It's called uh, Reality-Based Leadership. This book is an easy read. And what I love about this book is that she dives into very, very simple concepts that you can apply immediately. My favorite is her ability to talk about what does great look like and then make great happen. That's a very simple concept to have a conversation with someone who is coming to you with a problem instead of a solution, asking them, well, what does it look like? If it was great, what would great look like? Then how do we make it great? Let's go do that. And focusing more on that than focusing on the complaining and um, the loss of time that happens when someone brings up a problem instead of a solution. In conclusion to today's presentation, I just want to tell you that the changes that we've made from the 1980s to uh, 2019 are very, very clear. The first picture I have here is showing you a gentleman who is standing over. He's the leader and he is going to tell you with his power and his influence on what to do. And then we look at our 2019 picture, everybody's in more of a casual environment. They've got their laptops, computers, this guy has a tablet, and they're collaboratively uh, talking about what it is that needs to happen instead of having one person use that power to dictate over the rest of the group. And technology and work ethic and values play a key part in the power and influence that we have in leadership. And for me, I take the three P's really personally with people, process, and pipeline, and I look back to this picture and I say, this is exactly the type of environment I want to work for, I want to be a part of, 
and to be able to make the changes that are necessary for us to advance. The great thing about the company I work for is that in 1976 it was developed, so that it's really close to the 1980s, and it's nice to see that they have gone along with the effective change that's needed uh, to make great happen in the workplace. So power and influence is not necessarily taking your power and influence and doing something different. It's about affecting people in a positive way. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really look forward to any comments that you have. Have a great day. Thank you.